Well, you signed the six-year deal with Toronto, but then the next year you get traded to Houston. Mm-hmm. So what exactly happened? I, they, no, I showed the training camp, and but to see the, the the deal was made ahead of time. It it wasn't necessarily to that particular team. They because of that year we had, and it was like see that's the thing, Vlad, Jalen and I issue was always could be mended with Jalen and I. That year I had a problem with the coach too. And that's why I needed to get out of there. It wasn't I needed to be traded because my life said me, Jay and I, we one thing we were gonna do coming in training camp, we were gonna let the previous year let that stay where it's at. Right? Because that's the play, that's what we gotta do. We, let's move on, man. It, it happened last year, this year. We already knew coming to training camp, look, we're gonna move on, man, because we're both good talent. We got Chris Bosch who's gonna be a superstar in this league. We we can make the playoffs and, and make some noise. We just let's just do our thing. But it was the coach, Vlad, that I was never going to get past. I was never getting past Sam Mitchell and his utter disrespect uh, for us as men and for us as basketball players. And, you know, one time he came in the locker room and he called us bitches. Whoa. Right? The next time, another game, he's in the locker room after the game talking about why why players shouldn't why we why or what women we have in our rooms or when we go out and stuff like that. So his utter disrespect for us as men, human beings, and basketball players, that when I once and and, and here's about the environment that I grew up in, how it coincides with what I'm doing now. Cause where I'm from and grew up and things that I had to watch and see, disrespect led to death where I'm from. I don't see people lose their life over disrespect. So now here I am a grown man. I'm looking at another grown man's eyes as he talks to him, and he just has utter disrespect. And what hurt me the most is that we're in a professional setting and it's not much we could do to him. He can tell us this and get away with it. And it's not much we can say because he's the coach, we're the player. And we got to sit there and take this, take the foot up our rear end. And I'm sitting there like, well, in my head, I'm like, well, we didn't have to grow up like that. Someone disrespect you. You gotta, as a man, you have to go to that man and let him know that yo, listen, we not. I don't. I'm not tolerating that. But when you're in a pressure setting, it has to be done another way, right? And then in those settings, everyone's gonna side with the coach. They don't want to hear what the player. They don't care about the player. The general manager, the fans, the me. No one cares that the player could be right in that situation. So that summer after that season, with that summer right before we coming back to training camp. I already let it be known to the general manager, which is uh, Mr. Babcock, who's a phenomenal man. Uh, to this day, I love him, respect him for even signing me to the deal. You know, I, um, my family's life wouldn't be the same. My kids' life wouldn't be the same today if this man doesn't ink me to that six-year deal. Okay? So I'm forever indebted to uh, Rob Babcock. But unfortunately, I knew as a man, there was no way I was going back there to play for that man. The man never apologized. The man, you know what I'm saying? So it was it was no it was no way. And so they were trying to move me. I they found they traded me to the Houston Rockets, man, and I went back to my hotel and I almost I don't I don't even know how to do a backflip. I tried to do a backflip over the bed. That's how happy I was to to play with Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming. I said, man, I'm going to a title contending team. And I can get back into my element. Cause I come from Miami Heat where I played with Pat Riley and Stan Van Gundy and things were organized and structured and it worked. We end up, they end up taking a team. Uh, we were picked to finish last in the NBA, that two down, three tell the four Miami Heat team. We were, picked, we were picked to finish dead last in the NBA. We end up going to the Eastern Conference semifinals. So we was one of the, we was the top eight teams in the league. End up finished as the top eight team in the league. You know what I'm saying? So I come from a structured situation. I go to a situation uh, next year that was, for me personally, for my stability in the NBA, it was too chaotic for me. You know, the coach is off the rail. The players show up. Some of the players on the team, they practice on 11. They showing up 1040. So it was a little bit different to me. The things that led to playoff winning the previous year, when I got to Toronto that year in 2003-2004, none of that was going to lead to us winning, and we didn't make the playoffs. 
Well, I mean, you mentioned on the Houston Rockets, you're playing with Yao Ming, who is just, I mean, not only a basketball phenomenon, but he broke every international barrier you could possibly break when it comes yeah. to basketball becoming a global, a global sport. I mean, even to this day, uh, you know, the Houston Rockets are probably the the biggest basketball team, you know, in terms of love when it comes to China because Yao Ming yeah. played for the Rockets. Yeah, rightfully so. so. So what was that like playing? I mean, number one, and, and this guy is really, you know, if I remember there's always this picture I always look at with, with Shaq and Yao Ming. And, and Shaq looks like a regular, you know, just a regular man next to Yao Ming. Because oh, yeah. Yao Ming is so much bigger than him. Yeah, taller. So, yeah, exactly. exactly. Taller. So, so what was that, you know, just sort of environment like playing with, with Yao Ming? It was great, man. Yao... Playing with Yao Ming was one of the greatest times in my basketball life, man, from a, from a standpoint of he made you want to get better and go about your, your job the right way every day. If practice started at 11, Yao Ming's in the building at 9 working on his game, working on his footwork, working on his free throws, working on his turnaround post-up move. He's already in a full sweat. and I, So practice be at 11, I always got to the gym at 10. So I was always in the gym at 10. Uh, I, I thought I was doing something. <laughs> I'm in the gym at 10. I'm like, man, I'm doing my thing. I'm coming early. I'm get. I'm working hard. I'm working on my body. I'm working on my jump shot. Yao's already in there in a full sweat. Yao's doing his thing. And so when you see that from a, a guy, uh, all-star, perennial all-star, he's one of the best big men in the league at the time. Uh, he has to play year round because when he leaves the NBA, he has to go back, play with the Chinese national team and everything. Uh, his dedication, his dedication to the sport, to the game, to his team was was unlike any other. And it it made me want to do it every single day. And uh, I played for Jeff Van Gundy when I was with The Rock and I played for Rick Allen. And both of them could tell you that I, w I was always there on time. I practice every day. I practice hard every day because that was who I was anyway. But I have to credit getting traded and watching Yao every day to make sure I continue to do the same, the right thing at all times. And yet Yao was a, he's a phenomenal individual. I'm telling you, uh, yeah. not everyone get a chance to see him outside of the arena and everything, but us as a teammates, man, just to sometimes just to have conversations with him and talk with him. Yao's a good guy, funny guy. Um, um, it's just unfortunate because he's such an iconic figure because of you, you're going to recognize him when he walks down the street that he can't enjoy, he couldn't enjoy life outside the arena like he would love to because everyone's going to come up to him and bother him. You know what I mean? I, I can walk down the street. No one, you got to do a double take like, oh, because I'm only 6'2". So you got to, oh, oh, I should get to my little. You could be 25 blocks down the street. Like, Yao Ming's down there. You start running 20 blocks to see Yao Ming. <laughs> right.